high school education, this business mogul and author rose up the ranks and now co-owns one of South Africa's most visible beauty brands. This is Women and Wealth and I'm Nozi Pombandra. Tonight we profile Angelique de Toy. She's the co-owner of Anique Health and Beauty. We also found out how to get the ICT sector trending with more women at the top with Sigela Tabiso's Khabo Ralibepa. And in our Power Redefined segment, we profile Wikimedia Foundation's Executive Director, Lila Tretikov. She was forced to drop out of school at the age of 14, but she didn't let her lack of education hold her back from success. Angelique Dutoy is a writer, a life transformation speaker, and a shrewd businesswoman. I sat down with her to find out how she manages to wear all of these hats at the same time. Well, Nozifa, you know what is so fascinating about life is life gives every single one of us opportunity. And we need to just decide if we are hungry enough for that opportunity. Otherwise, the opportunity will pass us by. And you know, there's a wonderful saying that says people change either for one or two reasons. You either change through inspiration or through desperation. In my life, it was a case of both. I was absolutely desperate to experience change in my life. I had to leave school when I was 14 years of age uh, with no sense of a future, no sense of a hope, and there was a desperate drive in me to make my life different. And then I'd be inspired by looking at other people. And you know, I really self-educated because after leaving school, I had put everything that I could into reading and learning about the successful lives of other people. And so that became my inspiration. Mm. I also had a wonderful spiritual transformation, which really gave me the confidence to believe that there was much more to me than I was led to believe. And so I made it part of my life's journey to go on a journey of success. Sure, that sounds inspirational, just as you said. But on the one hand, you've also now gone on and you've acquired a need together with your husband. You've built this business to an absolute empire in South Africa. Where did you get the courage, not only for the acquisition, but to think that you could be one of the biggest players in the industry of health and beauty? You know, one of the things that I think is really important for us all to remember is that none of us achieve success on our own. We're all standing on the shoulders of other people who have pioneered the way before us. And collectively, my husband and I have over 30 years in the direct selling industry. It's an industry we are totally passionate about. In fact, it's the industry that unlocked the potential, which we know is power and reserve, in me, because I realized I didn't need to have an education. I didn't need to be wildly academic or brilliant or any of those fancy things. I just needed a serious desire to succeed. And the world of direct selling gave me that opportunity. The fact that I could make something of a career when I had nothing to really offer except yeah. my own desire to really achieve something with my life. And so the direct selling industry opened a window to the world to me that I never realized existed. Mm. And you know, as we were growing up in very difficult circumstances, my mother used to have one tin of Nivea cream. She used to say, I don't care about anything else that we don't have. What I do know is that you only have one skin. And so every single day we were going to put this Nivea cream on our skin. And I remember one day having a desire, thinking there's going to come a time in my life when I can afford to buy any skincare range that I desire. Little did I know that one day that would translate into buying an iconic brand like this all-powerful South African Anique brand from a very formidable lady herself, yeah. which was Dr. Anique Teron. And of course, she's known for discovering incredible value in the rooibos tea and the rooibos right. herb. And you're an author as well. You've published your first book in 2010, Standing Tall in a Fallen World. I know that the audience is diverse, but if there was a central message that you would want women to get out of that book, what, that would, what would that be? I think there comes a time in every single one of our lives when it feels like our world is falling. And to stand tall is a choice. And one of the absolute philosophies of my life is simply this. You win or you lose by the way that you choose. And so that book is flooded with the fact that at every crossroads of our lives, we have our choice in life, in business, and in your future. And the choices you make today are going to determine what you live through tomorrow. It's not dependent mm -hmm. on somebody else's decision. It's not dependent on somebody else's treatment of you. It's not dependent on your past. It's dependent on your choice in the now. Right. And that's really what my invitation to stand tall is all about. The choice in the now in 1999 though, you also established Women Arise. What is Women Arise and what are you trying to achieve with that? 
Women Arise is my passion. It really is my passion because it is focused on helping women just like you and I to live lives of greater purpose, greater passion and greater productivity where we can really give ourselves permission to succeed, where we don't have to wait for that cataclysmic event that says, you know, you can now be successful. We really need to give ourselves that permission mm. to succeed. And so my real focus with Women Arise is through a seminar facilitation called Your Life, Your Business and Your Future. And it really is about about helping women shift their minds because really for me that's where everything rises or falls is the way we think shifting lives and and maybe let's let's tap into that if there was a blind spot that you think women are often uh, looking into and missing opportunities what would that be and where would you want them to shift their mindsets to I think one of the biggest things that hold women back is what they've experienced in their past who has said what what negative experience they've had, perhaps a failure, perhaps a disappointment. And then we seem to somehow frame our entire lives in that circumstance. And then when opportunity does come our way, we don't allow ourselves to make the most of that opportunity because we keep reflecting back on what was instead of what can be. Mm -hmm. And so that blind spot is called a scotoma and we suffer from scotomas. And often I've got to say to myself, are you seeing this the way that you should right. be seeing this? Because we do rise or fall by the way that we think and it really is a mindset change that needs to be shifted so it really is about shifting minds shaping hearts and sharing success we've got to get it right on the inside yeah. before we can get it right on the outside so the premise of women arise is internal transformation to have external impact <music> Globally, 56% of ICT jobs are held by women. But in South Africa, the stat is considerably lower at only 20%. This despite a high enrollment of women in ICT-related courses at tertiary institutions. Earlier, I spoke to Khabu Walebepa, who is an associate director of Sikela Klabiso's IT audit division, to find out why South Africa lags behind the global trend. We have more women across the globe but if you look at uh, the ICT industry it's still very underrepresented mm. globally you have about 56 percent of the professional population mm. uh, being represented by only 20 percent in the ICT industry so that's not enough if you look at South Africa for instance you know we have we, are, we make up what 55 percent of the population only 20 percent are in ICT from a business perspective, there are businesses that are trying to integrate women into their ICT part of the business. Mm -hmm. For those that are on the, in the beginning of that process, how should they be thinking about the changes they need to make to the way they are currently doing business? I think to ignore you know, having women in your leadership is, will be to your own detriment. Because like, like I say, we are the, ma the majority of, of, um, of the population. <laughs> So I think there needs to be deliberate programs mm. and policies where you know, companies ensure that they have women in, in, in ICT leadership and they have mentors because the biggest thing is if you don't have a mentor, somebody who can actually hold your hand on job training and guide you in terms of what do I need to study so that I can get to where mm. you are. So I think there needs to be mentorship uh, programs in, in companies. There need to be those policies that encourage uh, businesses to put women in ICT leadership. But are we finding that uh, those structures exist within companies where they can give the employer an exposure to the technical side of the work whilst at the same time strengthening and reinforcing that with exposure to the other side of the operations of the business that fall outside of IT? Some companies do. Um, I have worked for a couple of companies where I found, you know, I was able to say, look, I want to be in finance because I need to be able to understand how finance work. And I was given that opportunity. So it, it, it differs from company to company. Some would think that, you know, I hired you as a technical person, so that's where you're going to stay. So it depends on, 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 on the various companies. In a company like Sekela Claviso, I think we are at an advantage because we get to interact with most clients. Mm. And you then, I mean, in order for me to be able to advise you on the technical matters, first of all, I need to be able to understand your business um, yeah. how your business operates. So I think in, in our field, we are much more advantaged in that, in that regard. Very quickly, if you could give me what value women bring into the IT space? I think because it's seen as a, you know, a male dominated um, area, once you see more women there, you will encourage more, even more, more younger women to come in, into play. 
And I think, you know, although people think IT is one of those um, careers that will, you know, keep you away from home, in my view, it shouldn't actually, because with, with, with I ICT comes mobility. And therefore, you know, if I'm a, a young woman and I'm thinking I'm going to have kids, um, I can be able to work from home, for instance. You can do that more within the ICT space than mm. most of the other careers. So I think the other thing that we bring in are the softer people skills that are tend to not naturally be there in our uh, men folks. Sorry, guys. But, uh, you know, it's, you know it, we, we bring that softer skills, yeah. the, the, you know, the softer people skills, right. which will also encourage more women to see, okay, you know, actually, I can do this. You know, I can be a woman and still be in IT, ICT. I don't have to be a man. Right. You know, in, in a woman's skin. Every week we bring you a woman who is flexing her power muscles on the global stage. Let's take a look at the woman who runs the non-profit organization that operates Wikipedia, Lila Tretikov. Russian-born technology leader Lila Tretikov made it onto this year's Forbes list of the world's 100 most powerful women after being named as the new executive director of the Wikimedia Foundation in May. The 36-year-old started out as an engineer and after obtaining several software patents, she went on to become chief information officer of software company Sugar CRM. Tretikov now leads Wikipedia's non-profit foundation and manages operations for the global volunteer-driven site used by more than half a billion people. The female leader is pushing for increased diversity in terms of volunteers who edit and administer the site, with less than 15% of contributions coming from women. And that's all we have time for for this week's episode of Women on Wealth. Do keep talking to us on Twitter, following me at Nozi Pombandra or at CNBC Africa. And remember that our hashtag is WOW410. Let us know who is redefining the concept of power in your world. Until next time, stay empowered. Mm -hmm.